it's crazy, isn't it? You know, we, we I remember during Joe's reign that you'd hear him moan consistently about the budget deficit. Mm -hmm. that people were going to have to struggle because they didn't have enough money in the budget mm -hmm. or that people's council tax were going to go up and that affects poor people when they were letting millions, they were squandering millions mm -hmm. in giving away assets of the city mm -hmm. without generating the, the, the income that those assets mm -hmm. could generate. They were just letting it go, you know, giving it away you know, when they could have been you know, charging millions for them. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it feels to me as if you know, there's a lot more that competent management of Liverpool City Council could do in terms of a real change of people on the ground in the you know poor deprived areas of Liverpool but I think this idea that you've talked about here which is starting a, a, an alternative political party that's really exciting because that's quite a development from um, one man standing alone in the mayoral um, contest because even if you won as an independent you'd still be an independent with a Labour council below you wouldn't you to you would. a large degree so I think this is a, 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 a an exciting development because it gives an opportunity to build a bit of a movement rather than just one man taking on the system so, so tell us more about that I mean if you have, have you got any ideas about moving that forward is this is this just in your head at the moment, or is this something that we're going to hear more and more about from Lawrence Kenwright over the, the next coming weeks, coming months? So, is the glass half full or half empty? So, I'm a half full guy. So, I don't necessarily see the past as an enormous negative. It is a negative, of course it is. Mm. But it is also a catalyst to change. And we all know the system here has failed. Mm. Uh, so, what is that catalyst? And how does that work? Well, we now understand totally what's just gone on. It might, mightn't have been proven with charges or arrests yet, but it is clear what's happened. And it is clear when Joanne Anderson, the, the sitting mayor, says... Oh, you know, last mayor. Well, she is yeah. appalled by what went on. She stated that, and she put that in the echo. Uh, I do believe that this city can go on to greater things. Mm. Whether it's me, I don't think it probably will be me. I, I think it should be democratically placed between what, the, the new the councillors. The leader of, of, a new, of a new party. Yeah, so it, I'm coming with an idea which yeah. brings together many separate factions in together as one, almost against the Labour Party mm. because of the way it's treated the people that voted into power. So I'm a coalition, not, in a sense. Yeah, and, yeah, but I'm not saying that's me, I, I, and, I, and I am not a politician, mm -hmm. you know. I, I am saying that I do think there will never be a better time now to turn over that apple cart mm -hmm. and turn it in our direction as the people with the bottom of politics. Let's not forget, Labour Party here is controlled totally by the Labour Party oh. London Ivory Tower. Mm. Why am I saying that? Well, because the nominations that are getting picked now for next May are picked with a nomination of one, mm. which means the local members of which I am one can now no longer pick the person that's going to represent me in the area that I live. So it's even more centralised? Well, it's not democratic either. No. Because those, those members are there to ensure that they pick based on their local knowledge, the person who's best placed with the best local knowledge to look after the interests of the people who live in that area. Mm. Now we have a single person, and I won't mention her name, who comes in and dictates who that person is going to be, irrespective of the view of the members of the local party. Mm. So now Labour Party are no longer in my view, locally, democratic. It is hell-bent on a view based on London and on Liverpool. And I think in order for Liverpool to understand its own problems, it has to be dealt with by people who are born and bred here. That doesn't mean to say that we can't have a politician who's born in a different country and comes over here. Mm. But what I am saying, I understand the system of Liverpool better than anyone... Than an outsider? will ever understand it mm. because it's part of my DNA yeah. and and I care ten times deeper mm. than an outsider would. Mm. Fact. Now, they may disagree with that. I don't. Mm. So my desire to look after my city and the people of this city, I think, runs far deeper than, than it would be with them. Now, well, the next leader... You're not going anywhere, are you? No, but the next leader wasn't born here, but great, he's chose to live here. That's fantastic.
but he wasn't born here. No. And I think in order to sort out our problems, we need to understand bottom-up politics first. Mm. So we need to deal with the problems of drugs and what that creates and the issues that creates. The problem that, you know, a mum hasn't got a husband and therefore has a singular wage or not a wage and is more, more worried about rats coming through a back door and feeding the kids and will she put the, the kids to bed at half past four because she can't afford to give them an evening meal. Mm. These are the situations that I know Liverpool councillors understand, but I also believe that there is part of our movement in Liverpool, which now has been taken away from us, is that because we're not trusted? Well, then if it's not, not that, then what is it? Mm. Why aren't we allowed to pick out who our next Labour councillors are going to be? And part of that is me saying I don't like an ivory tower in London with a nice posh accent telling me what I can and cannot do. Albeit, I'm not at the table. I would like to be at the table. Mm. And I would like to bring people of knowledge to that table. Mm. And I would like to create our own company, our own business, mm. to generate our own profits so we can uh, look after the most vulnerable without being anchored by grant funding, which already gets given out to friendships mm. based on that Labour ticket. I think everything needs to stop and start again. But if we had our own money, if we can go out and take those sites that were so freely given out to friendships to now be developed by our own business in a Gandhi style where no one ever looks at, you know, the, the new party or whatever that may be, in any way being um, fraudulent or, or, or not allowing people to see behind the veneer, a total open, openness and transparency. And at the end of a couple of years, when the first sites are done, we can say there's 100 million. That 100 million gets shared out between the 30 wards. That's three million pounds per ward per year. That's 60K, 60,000 pounds a week to be distributed out by the new councils mm. in order to ensure that those communities stay intact, in order to ensure that that youth centre is opened up again, in order to ensure that that youth centre becomes a conduit to jobs and not to selling drugs on the street. These are the issues that I think need to be dealt with and clearly haven't been. The Labour Party's been in power for 12 or 13 years. Has it done us any favours? Well, clearly not. Mm.